Today we'll be looking at 10 products that either directly relate to mountain biking or provide utility for mountain bikers. None of these reviews are paid, but some products were provided, which I'll disclose when applicable. With that, let's get started. The first product is Helmator, which is a helmet hook that I first saw in Sid and Mackey's van. The company saw the video and sent me some to try out. I noticed that they look kind of like peacocks. In testing the Helmator hooks, they seem to securely hold just about any helmet as advertised. The question is, why on earth would you need a helmet specific hook? Why pay $10 for a piece of plastic, when you could use a screw or a nail to do the same thing? Well, it's not exactly the same. Helmator holds your helmet away from the wall, protecting your paint from trail grime. It also looks cool when there's no helmet on it, which is nice if you have a bike cave that you take pride in. But perhaps the most important benefit of Helmator is that it secures your helmet. This is essential if you're using it on a door or in a vehicle. So depending on your needs, Helmator could either be totally pointless or the answer to all your hopes and dreams. I decidedly like it. Onto these knee pads sent to me by Cali Protectives. I tested both pairs in the shop and enlisted Felipe for a trail test since I can't ride yet. Our findings were more or less the same. That feels better, you can definitely bend your knees. So between those two pairs, definitely these ones? Yeah. These mission knee pads are slim and comfortable, but shift around once you get moving. Neither of us were impressed. As for the strikes, they might be the best knee pads either of us have tried. This mesh rubber pad on the front of the strikes is sure to collect lots of dirt and mud, but that's a fair trade-off for airflow. Better ventilation cuts down on sweat, aids in evaporation, and makes for an overall more comfortable experience. Despite being slim and comfortable, the strikes appear to have good padding and a very tough exterior. I also found that the shape of the kneecap helps keep them in place. Or maybe it's the placement of the straps. All I know is that they stay put. The strikes cost $85 and seem to be worth it. They will be replacing my POCs which were more expensive when I bought them. This season I'm going to be serious about always wearing knee pads without exception. Now for a few car products, starting with this seat protector I found on Amazon. You throw it over your headrest, it stays in place with these little nubs, and contains trail grime with its absorbent terry cloth. There's also an impermeable layer inside to keep out liquid. When not in use, these covers are machine washable and easy to roll up. At $25, I think they're priced fairly, but it should be noted that you can also protect your seat with a towel. Come on, buddy. Still, the adequate length, grip, and impermeability makes them superior to a towel and worth the money if you're serious about keeping your car clean. The next product is a soft topper, which is a foldable cap available for most pickups. The reason I bought this was so I could travel with my family and keep all our stuff out of the weather. Knowing that I'd have it off as much as on, I chose the soft topper for its portability and ease of storage. It installs with these bed rails that fit existing factory bolt holes. And from there, you can pretty much drop it on and button it up. The quality is great, it doesn't flap around in the wind, and it more or less works as advertised. But the soft topper isn't a fiberglass cap killer. There's no way to lock the soft topper, nor would it matter since you could just slice it. So this isn't a good solution for contractors with expensive tools, nor will it keep your mountain bike safe. Starting at $700, it is an affordable alternative to a fiberglass cap that you can camp in or just use to keep your stuff dry. And by request from hundreds of you guys, I'll give you a quick review of my Honda Ridgeline. A lot of you were flabbergasted when I didn't buy a Tacoma, and instead got a family SUV-like pickup hybrid. I'll admit that my impulsive and adventurous side was craving the Tacoma, but my practical side won after test driving the 2017 Ridgeline. First of all, it handled incredibly, way better than your average pickup. It also had a more spacious interior and an impressive technology package. Getting directions to Industry 9. It had lane keep assist, adaptive cruise control, smartphone integration, and like 8 million cup holders. These may not sound like things I would care about, but I'm on track to put 35,000 miles on this thing in year one. I knew I'd be spending a lot of time in it, 
So interior, comfort, and practicality were my top priorities. But putting aside all of those things, I still would have gotten the ridgeline for one killer feature. Underbed storage. Every compact pickup has a backseat full of crap, except for this one. Everything I need from tools to gear to tie downs to those seat covers can be secured in this watertight compartment, leaving the cab free for people and pups. So while the ridgeline is no Tacoma, it easily tows 5,000 pounds, has all-wheel drive, and is packed full of features that suit me better, even though it has a Honda emblem on it. On to the next product, the Matchsticks. It's a through axle. It's a multi-tool. It's gorgeous. It's $145. But are you really surprised? It's made by Industry 9. Now, i9 will never be for everyone. As they choose to design, manufacture, and distribute all their products in Asheville using local labor. That means you pay for it, but it also means they employ people who ride the same trails I do. It means they're my neighbor. And it means I'm a little bit biased. But still, it's hard to make excuses for any product at this price point. So I'll just give you the pros and cons. Let's start with the cons. The Matchsticks is pricey, we covered that. It also doesn't flip out like a normal multi-tool. You need to muscle these bits out of a tube, which doesn't seem very i9. The handle doesn't have the most leverage, and the tool is necessarily missing some of the larger bits that are impossible to fit inside an axle. So the Matchsticks won't be for everyone, but it does have some unique advantages. First of all, it can't get left behind, as it lives in your bike. The Matchsticks may also be the lightest multi-tool, period, as unlike other integrated tools, it replaces part of your bike. So once you subtract the weight of your old axle, you're only carrying around an extra 25 grams. The Matchsticks also features an impressive array of tools, including a spoke wrench, a valve core remover, a chain tool, quick link storage, and your choice of bits, which are also machined in Asheville. It's also great looking and available in all the colors you'll find at the candy store. So for those of you looking for a beautifully machined, lightweight, boutique multi-tool that can't get left behind, the Matchsticks is pretty friggin' nice. If you're looking to save money, buy literally any other multi-tool. I wouldn't spend $145 on this unless I broke or lost a Maxel and was already on the hook for $50. Then the cost would be easier to come to terms with. The next product is the Yi 4K Plus Action Camera which I was hoping would be a good GoPro replacement. It costs under $300, can shoot in 4K at up to 60 frames per second, and features some pretty impressive image quality. In fact, I used it to shoot a lot of this video. The touchscreen feels like a smartphone, much better than GoPro, and the menu is more intuitive. The E 4K Plus also features a tripod thread, which makes it super convenient. But as an action camera, I think it's lacking. The stabilization is weird to say the least, the field of view doesn't seem all that wide, and the microphone doesn't do a good job of automatically adjusting to input levels, something that even older GoPros are good at. Alright, audio test with the E 4K Plus and Hero 4 Black. Alright, audio test with the E 4K Plus and Hero 4 Black. Alright, audio test with the E 4K Plus and Hero 4 Black. Although it does change exposure quickly, I don't think it does as smoothly as a GoPro. And note that the GoPro I'm comparing it to is two generations old. Another problem is using it with a gimbal. If you place it right side up, one of the mics is right against the motor which picks up the sound. Alright, testing for gimbal noise. The low light is also really noisy, even at lower frame rates and resolutions. It's also worth noting that there aren't a ton of accessories specifically designed for the Yi. So for me, the Yi 4K Plus is a good camera for the shop, or to use for third person shots. But it's not replacing my GoPros. The next product is All Mountain Style Frame Guards. These are universal frame guards made to protect your down tube, fork, chainstay, and anything else that may take some pebble and rock impacts. Before AMS sent these to me, I had never heard of them, but Felipe instantly knew what they were. Wait, so you heard about the All Mountain Style yeah. guards? You never heard of them? No! I just saw that they were like super expensive to ship, that's why I didn't buy them. I should also note that my bike already comes with guards for the down tube and chainstay, which appear to be thicker and more functional than the ones from AMS. 
I found that to install the guards, a heat gun comes in handy. But still, on a brand new frame, I was unable to work out all the bubbles. Maybe these just aren't for me. As for Felipe, he was surprisingly excited about the AMS guards, and very happy to replace the vinyl camo tape on his bike with this tougher, more refined armor. At $35, I think they're priced fairly for those who need them, but I wouldn't want to experiment with them. I had the luxury of trial and error with these samples, but it would be kind of frustrating to spend $35 and then screw up the installation. The next product is a bike stand that screws into the wall. It looked a lot bigger on Amazon, and I admit that I thought it was universal. I should have looked at the size. Yes, it only fits road bikes, and $17 is steep for a tiny piece of plastic. But I must admit I'm impressed. This review will be super short though, because there's not much to say about these bike stands, besides that they're really clever and work well if you have skinny tires. I'd love to build a mountain bike version of this into my workbench, as this is a really convenient position for making cockpit repairs. The next product is not this Victorinox Swiss Army Knife, which is as beautiful as it is functional. This is the classic multi-tool, with its unmistakable design and signature click. So I should be forgiven for expecting a Victorinox bike tool to be like, well, a Swiss Army Knife. This is almost like the matchsticks, but not beautiful, compact, or integrated. In fact, it's like three times the size of an F10, which functions more like a Swiss Army knife than this does. Objectively speaking, this isn't a bad tool. In fact, the quality is great and it has a lot of leverage, but it's poorly marketed. Victorinox could have made a Swiss Army knife with bike tools in it. It would have been an awesome gift, and people would have been happy to pay a premium for it just for the novelty. But this does not excite me. Sure, with the tire levers, it might be great for roadies, but I don't know. There are too many other great products out there to recommend this, since it's not all that interesting or novel. And that concludes our 10 mountain bike related products. If you want to know where to get any of this stuff, just tap the little arrow below the video. Or just use the Google technology. Also, let me know what categories you want to see more of. Integrated tool storage? Hydration? Put it down in the comments. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.